My name is Relinda Ruth, and I'm the Director of Educational Resources and OER Specialist at UA CASATOT. We're now using the latest edition of MLA Style, which is the ninth edition, and there are some changes that students need to know about. Before we look at MLA, here's a quick reminder of what citation is and why we use it. It's important to cite our sources to let readers know about the material coming from another source. Citing also allows readers to find that information quickly. We need to cite to not only credit the original author, but to avoid plagiarism. Plagiarism usually results in academic penalties and in some cases, legal and criminal action. When you cite sources, it shows that you've researched what you're writing about, and it strengthens your work by lending support to your own thoughts. Now that we remember what citing is and why we do it, let's talk about MLA style. MLA stands for Modern Language Association. We typically use MLA in humanities, like literature and philosophy. A common mistake often made is to think that MLA is merely a way to cite sources. MLA covers the stylistics of your writing from point of view to word choice. It's also about the organization of content. As we go through these slides together, remember that although these slides follow MLA style ninth edition, your instructor may require something different. Another thing that we often forget is that humanities typically uses a subjective tone. The subjective tone is personal and can be biased because it focuses on personal experiences. Concentrate on research to help support your ideas. One of the best ways to stay unbiased is to present all sides of the argument. Don't use any personal pronouns like I or you. When writing in MLA style, you should use a thesis statement. A thesis statement is so important in writing essays. Not only does a thesis statement declare the writer's claim, but it also predicts how the author will develop the topic. Don't assume that the term thesis statement means only one sentence. A thesis statement may be more than one sentence. It typically appears at the end of the introductory paragraph and is used at the conclusion to show the author has proven their claim. Bias-free language is important in any writing and just like other styles, MLA has specific rules about inclusivity and respect when talking about gender. One of the new things about recent updates to any style of writing is the acceptance of a singular they to show inclusivity. This is the standard MLA format for students. Keep in mind that your instructor may have different guidelines. Unlike APA style, MLA style does not include a cover page. The lines should be double spaced with one inch margins. The most commonly accepted font to use is Times New Roman 12 point font. Pagination will appear at the top right with the author's last name. The author's name, instructor's name, course name, and the date in a day, month, year format with omitted commas will appear. The title will also appear on the first page and that will be centered. As a college instructor, I find myself repeating this all the time. Do not underline, italicize, bolden, or place your title in quotation marks. Write the title in standard capitalization, not all caps. Include a works cited page at the end of the paper. The first page includes the author's name, the instructor's name, the course name, and the date. The title will be centered and typed in boldface. Don't forget to indent the first sentence of each paragraph. If you're not sure how to set up double spacing in Microsoft Word, this slide shows a step-by-step -step process. 
the good news is that once you set it up, you can set it to default so that all future documents are automatically set to double spacing. In another video that covers MLA formatting, I'll walk you through the process step by step. To set your margins in Microsoft Word, select Layout and Margins to the left. Make sure that the one inch normal template is selected. Pagination can be set using the Insert tab at the top. Select Page Number, Top of Page, and Plane Number 3. Moving the cursor to the left side of the number, type your last name and space. Something students need to remember is that if you haven't set your font, make sure you highlight the number and select the same font you're using in the body of the paper. All the font in the paper should be consistent. Speaking of font, select the arrow just to the right of fonts on the Home tab. Select the appropriate font and size. Just like line spacing, you have the option to set as default so that you don't have to remember to check your font on every paper. The general guidelines for in-text citation in MLA style is to use parenthetical citation. If you've included the author's name in the signal phrase, then you need only the page number at the end of the sentence. Be sure that the signal word or phrase you use matches its corresponding entry on the works cited page. And when I say that, you can see what I mean. Uh, you've got a signal phrase according to Johnny Saldina, each of the seven descriptive coding cells are chronologically compared to. And then you can see the page number because the author is named in the sentence. So that same entry on the works cited page is going to start with the author's last name, Saldina. A reader can easily match that up when uh, looking at your paper. Here are some examples from Purdue that show you how to handle in-text citation. For specific examples, see the ERC's library guide on MLA style 9th edition. Be sure that your punctuation appears after the parenthetical citation. The Works Cited page appears as a separate page after the body of the paper. In MLA style, we use a Works Cited page, and in APA style, we use a References page. Same concept of listing sources, but in a different format. One thing that both styles share is that entries are double-spaced, listed alphabetically, and second and subsequent lines are indented. The page is titled Works Cited. To set a hanging indent, you can use the same step you use to set line spacing, but select hanging under indentation and special. A signal phrase is a short introduction phrase that names the author or the article title and lets the reader know that a quote or paraphrase is coming. Using signal phrases provide an effective transition between your ideas and your supporting sources. If you don't use a signal phrase, use in-text citation to credit the author and show the date. If there is one, include the page number in your in-text citation. Anything you're citing in the paper must have a corresponding entry on the references page except personal interviews. As an instructor, I like to see signal phrases because it shows the author's effort to transition between their ideas and their sources. Remember, the ERC has several library guides available at their webpage, or you can go directly to libguides.cccua.edu to see the list. Capitalization can be a little tricky in MLA style. You can see the rules in this slide. Be sure to capitalize proper nouns. While APA style focuses on dates, MLA style focuses more on authors, so you should include their first name if available. 
An easy way to remember the rules for italicizing and using quotations on titles is to think italicize long and quote short. If your paper includes quotations that have four lines of prose or three lines of verse, place quotations in a freestanding block of text and omit quotation marks. Indenting the entire passage one half inch from the left margin separates the text from the rest of the paper to let the reader know that it is a long quote. Indent the entire passage, omit quotation marks, and place the parenthetical citation after the closing punctuation mark. Remember, this is for block quotes only. The basic rules for the Works Cited page is to use hanging indentation, list all your entries alphabetically, and invert the author's names. You can't memorize every citation formula. It's impossible and it often changes. The best way to master writing styles is by knowing exactly where to look. Purdue Online Writing Lab is one of the best because it's user friendly and it includes so much information. Another place to check writing styles is through the ERC's MLA Style 9th Edition Library Guide. And yet a third way to master writing styles is by asking a tutor at the ERC. Remember, the Purdue site and the ERC Library Guide. Bookmark both of them so you know where to look. Many instructors require the use of ERC online databases which often have citation for articles. Be sure to double check those at the website. Sometimes they are outdated or you may not be selecting the right style. If you have any questions about MLA style, visit the ERC at any campus.